Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on paths and mats and masking using Motion 5. There's some really interesting stuff that Motion does that a lot of people don't understand, including me. I've had a great time learning about this and want to share it with you. There's some great stuff. Let's take a look at it together. By the way, all our online video training, tutorials, and webinars are now available via subscription. This includes our Final Cut Pro 10, our brand new Adobe Premiere CS6, and Autodesk Smoke Training. For one low monthly fee, you get streaming access anywhere, anytime via the internet. Plus, subscribers can attend any of our live webinars for free. This is a fast and low cost way to access all of our online training. Well over 400 movies are now online and available to you. To learn more, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. Paths are central to creating shapes and masks. So we're going to look at them in detail today. I'll show you how to use the paint stroke tool, which is where I started to learn and became very frustrated with it until I discovered how to create paths. And then we'll see how to create shapes, how to put text on a curve, how to animate shapes, how to create masks, and how to add automation to all of this. A paint stroke is a hand-drawn line which is filled with colors or shapes. A path is a vector-based line that can define a line or a region. Vector-based means it's mathematically drawn and it has any amount of resolution that you want. We can use either Bezier, which we're familiar with with Final Cut, or B-spline control points. And B-splines can do things that Bezier's can't. A shape is a vector-based object drawn using control points, which defines a mathematical object could be a square or a rectangle, could be a blob, could be anything in between. A mask is an area within an image that is used to create regions of transparency. Masks, by definition, makes parts of an image disappear. Unlike shapes or paths or paint strokes, masks must be assigned to an object in a layer. There's two types of control points. There's Bezier and B-spline. Bezier we're familiar with with Final Cut. These are good for drawing shapes for illustration as they allow creating precise, detailed shapes with sharp edges. Bezier's are best for objects with sharp corners. B-splines, on the other hand, create softer, gentler curves, which are excellent for drawing extremely smooth edges. Bezier's can be animated, but B-splines are easier to animate. So let me show you how to compare lines drawn with the paint stroke and path tools, how to create open and closed shapes, how to change the styling of the path, how to animate a shape, how to draw and animate text on a curve, and animate a shape on a curve. We'll create masks using shapes, beziers, and b-splines. <laughs> and along the way, we're going to explore a variety of styling and animation options. This is a motion project that I've created, and let's start with something really simple. Down here is the toolbar, and this is the paint stroke tool. To draw with the paint stroke tool, let's just click, hold, and drag, and we draw a path. The good news is it works great. The bad news is it looks like it's drawn by somebody that has absolutely no control over his hand and eye coordination. Let's try another one. Look at that. I'm trying to draw it straight. Well, once I've got that path drawn, we can go to Selection Tool, select that path, open up the HUD, which is this button down here, or the F7 key, F7. We can change the width of the outline by dragging on the HUD. We can change the color, and here there's two ways we can change the color. We can click here, which opens up a standard color picker, or we can click here, which opens up the motion color picker. There are two ways to get to the same place. We'll just make this a nice blue and close that. And this is all well and good. We can straighten it out by clicking this tool down here. This is the selection tool. They call it the transform tool. And you would think it has the letter A as the keyboard shortcut as every other professional application in Final Cut and all the stuff from Final Cut Studio 3. Wrong. It's like some Shift S or something because A sets keyframes and drives you nuts. So we're going to select the Edit Points tool. 
Notice that there are points in here which we can then use to adjust the shape of the curve. We'll talk more about these in a minute. And I thought this was the best it got, and I still couldn't get straight lines. But really, the paintbrush tool, as I call it, paint stroke as Apple calls it, is a very limited tool that's specifically designed for just sort of drawing with the mouse, or if you had a pen and a tablet. <sighs> Face it, for people that are mechanically challenged and can't draw a straight line without assistance from someone else, like me, it doesn't cut it. Instead, I want to introduce you to this tool right here. This is the path tool, and if you hold the mouse button down, we see that there are Bezier and B-spline paths. I'm going to select the Bezier tool. The way this works is you click where you want the path to start, and you click where you want the path to end, and it automatically draws a line connecting the two of them. If you hold the Shift key down, the Shift key constrains this to a 45 degree, or 180 degree, or 90 degree angle. I'm just done doing that. When you're done drawing the path, you have two options. If you click on the starting point again, it creates what's called a closed shape. If you just press the return key, it creates what's called an open shape. The lines don't draw an area, they just stay unconnected. I just press the return key. By default, it draws a white line. If we display the HUD again, we see that it's got a fill checked, which is green, and an outline. We can change the size of the outline by dragging up or down. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on paths, mats, and masking inside Motion 5. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz store and look for webinar number 80.